Hello again. Today we're going to talk about multiple alleles. And the best place to start is basically just two alleles. Because a lot of what we've been working on lately has only really been with two alleles. So if there's just two alleles, and I'll use the example of a big T or a little t, there's only three different combinations that we can get. We can put the big T with the big T right here, two of those, or I could put a big T with a little t, or I could take those little t's and put them together. So basically when you're talking about multiple alleles, whether you have two, three, four, or whatever the number is, you basically just need to mix and match to get all the different combinations that you can get that you can find out how many combinations a person could have. So if you have two alleles, the only options that you can get are these three. So what if there's three alleles? So if these are our alleles, and I'm just making these up because we were using those big T's just a second ago, but we're, we don't have anything in between a capital and a lowercase, so I've just added these numbers to shape, show that these are the alleles that we have. So if there's three alleles, one of them is T prime or T1, the other one is T2, and the other one is T3. How many different combinations can you make with these alleles? And remember, we just have to figure out the mixing and matching. So why don't you take a moment right now to pause the program and see how many different combinations that you can get with these alleles. And once you've finished that, then come back to the program. And do not just keep playing it for those of you that think that you should do that because this might be a good question on a test. So I'm trying to get you guys to practice. So pause the program and then come back. All right, here's the answers. With those three alleles, there's one, two, three, four, five, six combinations. So how'd you do? Did you get the six? And I know that some of you are like, wait a second. How come I came up with T2 and then T1? Well, really, that's the same thing. So although you might have had more, the minute you're using those two alleles, whether you put the T1 first or second, it's really considered the same matchup. So with three alleles, we can only get six different options. So it just kind of shows you that the more alleles you have, the more options that you can have with uh, people. And that's one of the reasons why we get so much variation in the population. So what's the application to this? So if you're like me, when I was in high school, I always wanted to know why and what does this matter to me? Well, a really classic example of multiple alleles is with blood type. And that's what you guys read about um, the other day. So this is an application of this. So blood type has three alleles, just like our example that we just did. The allele options are capital I superscript A is one option. Capital I superscript B is another option down here. And this is a lowercase i. So this little i right here is actually lowercase because he's recessive to these other uppercase letters. So there's three different options for blood type. So with those multiple alleles, again, we have three options capital I superscript A, capital I superscript B, or little i. And by the way, um, it's really important to put these capital letters here. Don't just write A and B because this is on the final exam and this is the proper way to write this. So get in the habit of doing the capital I superscript A. With those three different alleles, how many ways can we put those alleles together? And I've done one for you. And I know that you've already practiced your other uh, combinations with the sample that I just gave you. But why don't you pause the program for a second and see how many different options you can get with those three alleles. And when you're done, come on back. So here are the options. Here's the first one that I gave you, capital I, superscript A, capital I, superscript B, capital I, A, capital I, B, capital I, superscript A, little i, capital I superscript B, capital I superscript B, capital I superscript B little i, and two little i's. Now what I'd like you to do is if you go to your textbook on page 394, 
there's a table that actually shows the different blood types. Here we have our genotypes. So these are our genotypes. So what I'd like you to do now is in your notes next to all of these different options, I'd like you to put down what actual blood type they would have phenotypically. And again, you're going to get that information from your book on page 394. So why don't you pause the program for a second and then come back and we can talk about it. All right, so this first person is blood type A. Second person is AB. The third person is blood type A because the IA is dominant to this little I. The fourth person has B blood type. The fifth person has B blood type again because this capital I superscript B is dominant to this little I. And then last but not least, and this drives people crazy and I don't know why they did it, but these two little I's actually mean that they have blood type O. So this is blood type O. Now we didn't talk about this up here and this is what you read about last night for homework. So this is co-dominance, meaning co, meaning together. These two alleles are expressed together. So you're just going to have to remember that, that IA, IB is actually co-dominant. So both of those alleles get expressed just pretty much like this one does. The A gets expressed and the A gets expressed. They're both dominant, so they both do the talking like we talked about in class. Here, they both do the talking, so you're going to see both. Here, the capital I superscript A does all the talking and this little I never gets in a word edgewise, so he wouldn't show up. It's just the A. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the B here is B, B blood type. This B does all the talking and this little guy doesn't get a chance to. So now we're going to use these genotypes to practice our Punnett squares. So here's an example. I took a person that has AB blood type and I'm crossing that with this person who is heterozygous for A blood type. Heterozygous meaning that they're different alleles, right? If I go back to our different options, this person would be homozygous A, this person is AB, this person is heterozygous A, homozygous B, heterozygous B, and plain O. So going back to our sample, this is an AB blood type crossed with a person that is heterozygous for A. So just like all of our other Punnett squares, we just bring those letters over, bring these letters down, bring this down, bring this down, come over, bring this down, come over. The capitals always go first. And then we do our analysis. So let's look at all of the offspring in this particular Punnett square. If a person that has AB blood type marries a person that has A blood type, what's the per, um, percentage of their offspring? What kind of blood type are their offspring going to have? Well, this person's going to have A blood type, but so is this person. So 50% of their children will have A blood type, 25% will have AB, and 25% will have B. So that's what I'd like you to do for homework. You're going to be practicing the crosses and then calculating the percentages of their offspring and what their blood type would be. And again, if you need to refer back to page 394 in your book to look at the different types of options for blood type, feel free to do that. So here's the practice problems. You're going to cross a woman with heterozygous B blood type with a man that has O, a woman that has AB blood type crossed with a man that has heterozygous A, and a woman that has O blood type crossed with a man that has AB blood type. And again, just like I said in class, you need to show your work. So even if you know what the answers are going to be, I need to see that Punnett square because I want to make sure that you're doing your work appropriately. So good luck with that. Feel free to go back and review any of the um, other slides that you need to. And again, the page in your book is 394, so that might help as well. Good luck.